This little guy drives on wobbly wheels and I recently tested them out in a range of scenarios and in that video I challenged you to make your own variations for me to 3D print and try out. Well heck, you guys delivered and printing them all on one little end of three just wasn't going to cut it. So in this short series I'll be printing all of your wacky wheel designs on all my 3D printers and I'll show you the slice of tweaks and settings I selected to get the best possible prints. Let's get started. Okay, okay, so not all of my 3D printers, but pretty much every i3 style printer I have was used to print these wheel designs. And this is part one because you guys sent in a lot of wheels. You'll find timestamps below. You may be wondering, hey, why isn't this printer being used? You had one of those in the past. Well, I actually give away a lot of my review units after I'm done with them, seeding them out into the community through friends of friends. And much against my better judgment, I tend to give away the better ones because I know they'll actually help new makers versus rubbish ones that they'll just have heaps of issues with. It's why I no longer have a Prusa Mark III or a Sidewinder X1. They've all gone off to deserving homes and they used way more than I ever could to print really cool things. But let's start with the oldest of the bunch, my original Creality Ender 3. I reviewed this printer halfway through 2018 and initially I had a ton of small quality control issues that really soured my initial impressions. However, with some new PTFE couplers and a magnetic removable print surface from Easy Peelzy, it really did become an absolute workhorse and I've used this little printer for so many printing projects on the channel. I recently serviced it in a video and honestly, it's going great. The LCD is dying a little bit, but it's still readable and that's really the only complaint. I used my Ender 3 to print these wheels by Avocado and She Flyer, and I apologize in this video if I pronounce your names wrong, I just had what I was going on with the STL naming schemes. We'll start with Avocado's Spiky Boys. For a start, um, I don't know what scale you exported these in Avocado, but they showed up in a slicer as microscopic, and scaling to inches or even 10 times, 100 times just didn't seem to work. So I used Mesh Mixer and its face-to-face -face measurement tool to scale them up to the correct 12mm hex using another wheel as a rough template, which worked fine. In terms of printing, there isn't a great orientation to do them because they would need support material either across one surface or the other, so I did elect to cut the embossed text off so they would lay flat. So apologize about that. If you want to get a flat surface with text, I recommend instead debossing maybe 0.5 millimeters or so, so that it tends to give nice readable text, but then you won't need to have supports for supporting a floating surface. Those sharp spikes though definitely need supports, they're too overhung to get away without them, so I turned that on, but I used a support blocker in the center to keep them out of the hub detail because they're not needed there. And it turned out pretty nice. The coarse 0.25 millimeter layers give the spikes a rough but savage look. Next is She Flyer's wheel design, which is almost the opposite with this gorgeous flowing shape. And it's a wheel design that follows the surface area limitation as well. Printing this model has two main considerations. First, the initial layer has a really small contact surface area, so I elected to use a three millimeter brim to help stick it down to the print bed, which is removed after the print's done. And secondly, these flowing edges as they round over it at the bottom and top are very extreme overhangs. One way to support them would be to use support material, but that adds time and cleanup to each wheel. So I elected to use variable layer heights instead. I used a base layer height of 0.3 millimeters, which is very coarse, and I decreased the layers for the bottom and top areas. So where the curve is, they could use the additional steps of the finer layer heights to form correctly without too much of an overhang each layer. It was a risky move, and there's a few very small areas where it hadn't quite worked out, but overall the prints did succeed and they do look really, really cool. I'm really keen to see what patterns these leave in the sand. Next printer, the BQBX. I reviewed this pre-production model and overall quite liked a few of the unusual features they implemented, such as the huge Raspberry Pi ready touchscreen interface, the inductive mesh bed leveling, and this super cute direct drive extruder with a geared NEMA 14 motor. Unfortunately, it is pre-production and does have a few weird bugs that I covered in the review that make using it quite a pain. The SD card can't be run from the interface side due to the prints corrupting. It has to be 
in the main board, and it never remembers my Z offset, which means each print starts too close to the bed, and I must instantly baby step it 0.4 millimeters. The original print surface as well wasn't too great, um, so I'm actually using this very old Prusa Mark III PEI spring steel sheet, and that works fine. I've noticed as well that there's some slop developing in the gears, which makes this quite audible clicking sound during retracts. I know in some reviews of this extruder since the Kickstarter that there is some quite severe quality control issues, so be aware of that, I'm gonna keep an eye on it. However, when all of these issues in my machine are managed, it actually prints really, really well, but it does mean I only use this printer when I do need more printers on the go. First up are Nat Gazer's wheel, which have this very recognizable off-road tread pattern. It's kind of my fault for not specifying clearances, but the rear of the wheel was going to intersect with the motor mounts. So I actually took his model into Tinkercad, which is my go-to way of quickly modifying STL files. Even though it's very simple and free, it does a great job at it. With the model in Tinkercad, I created a cylindrical hole and I aligned the two so it perfectly cut away some more clearance in the rear of the wheel. And then I brought the STL back into Prusa Slicer for slicing. For a print like this, the best orientation means we will still need support material for the center hub detail, but you don't have to fill the entire underside with support material. Instead, what I did was use the new support painting tool to mark the center area with some supports to create basically a column where the edges could bridge to. And this saves both time and material as long as the bridging distance isn't too far, and it should look fairly decent too. The tread pattern does have some overhang, but it's nothing the printer can't handle without support material, so you don't need them anywhere else except for this center column. Another approach here would be to use the experimental setting don't support bridges, so this will try to do basically the same thing by calculating where bridges would be in the print and then not generating supports underneath them, but I find I personally like a little bit more control with the support painting approach, so either way will work, just depends on what you prefer. To create the wheels for the other side, I simply mirrored them in Prusa Slicer and sliced them separately. And I think they turned out really nicely in this simple red PLA. Next up on the BQBX, however, is this much more difficult design, which is this helical wire wheel. Initially, I tried this model with no support material on the end of three, but it failed as it got to the monstrous overhangs at the top and the delicate details just caused it to catch. So I bit the bullet and included support material. This makes these wheels among the longest to print and the most delicate, but once cleaned up and the support material removed, I think they do look really spectacular. And these are just a couple of the wheels you guys sent in. So in part two, I'll show you how I printed the last few designs and we'll start testing them out. If you want your wacky wheel designs printed or I've somehow missed yours, I've set up a temporary link in the description of this video. So all you need to do is simply upload them to your STL repository of choice, and then contact me through that link with, for example, what you'd like to be called and what your wheel is called because a lot of people didn't even rename the template file or include a name. So I've had to guess a couple of times, but either way, if you want me to try it out, you can find the link below. And if you found this video useful, then maybe consider subscribing to Maker's Muse, where it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.